So here we are. Hope you're all doing marvelously well. And we are going to film a video now with Alex from Recording Connection. And it is about recording electric guitars. And I'm going to throw a real curveball at Eric. Eric, yes. Yamaha gave us a brand new electric guitar. Why don't we use that? Why don't we unbox it and get it on video? What? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. This is very exciting. Oh, they gave me a case. God bless them. So this is like the newer model. And now, oh, it's, it's kind of heavy. I'm gonna unbox it. And we're gonna uncase it, sorry. Anybody tell it's 1.15 in the morning? Oh, that's Ooh. rather gorgeous. Ooh. It's rather nice, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's made in Japan. So it's Japanese, beautiful looking. <laughs> Oh, it's so well set up, it's ridiculous. It's amazing. Okay, Yamaha, you rock. So now we have a guitar to try out our miking techniques. Thank you ever so much, Yamaha. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, so here we are. We've got our tone tubby. We've got my Marshall JMP in there. So we're gonna talk about a couple of different ways to mic. So let's go logically. Here's the middle of the cab there about. In the center of the cone is a dust cap. And sometimes it's made of metal, sometimes it's made of you know, a, a cardboardy cloth kind of material. Whatever it's made of, that is the brightest part of the speaker. So if I put the microphone right there, I'm gonna get the brightest tone. I don't typically do that. What I typically do is I go somewhere in the middle of the cone. So I go towards the middle and then go, with a 12 inch cab come out just a few inches. That's pretty standard. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put a 57 here and then we're gonna use a Lewitt 550, LCT 550, a large diaphragm condenser. Check on the settings. It is set at zero dB linear, no roll off. So it's set, set flat basically. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in a similar place on the other side of the dust cap. So they're kind of similar. It's, it's, this is not absolute science, but it's gonna give us an idea. So we're gonna to get to hear what it's like using a condenser and using a 57. Now, 57s are pretty much industry standard when it comes to recording guitars. Another trick we're gonna do on the back, put another 57 on the back of the speaker. And that, as near as darn it is gonna be opposite this microphone here. Now, you might ask, why am I gonna do that? Well, a lot of low end comes from the back, hence the open back cap. So what we do is we flip the polarity, or some people say we flip the face. We're gonna flip the polarity. Because, think about it logically, if the speaker is pushing air this way, the microphone that's pointed is gonna see the waveform cutting at it like this, and the other one is gonna see it in reverse. So for proper polarity, we take this microphone, take the reverse microphone in the back, and we flip the polarity, flip the phase, so that they are both hearing the signal the same way. Same way you would with the top and bottom snare, top and bottom toms, you always take the bottom mic and you reverse the polarity. I will say, if you are in recording incredibly loud amplifiers, you might want to pull the mic back if you know the sound pressure levels are so high, like for a condenser, that they're overloading the condenser. Now, another common one that people do is they use um, ribbon mics as well, which traditionally is really good on very, very bright, incredibly bright amps. I'll put a ribbon on there because it controls the top end. On this particular setup with the Tone Tubby, just for my preference, with the Tone Tubby cab, these are a little darker. That's why I actually like them. A lot of heavy rock guitar players are starting to use them because we all love our Marshalls. Marshalls are freaking awesome, but they are the brightest, loudest things on the planet. And this, I'm starting to find, a lot of guys are starting to find is a perfect combination for a really, really loud, bright amp. Because there's something about a Marshall which is still, to me, the sound of rock and roll. And I have a 412, you've probably seen lots of my videos. Since moving to this, it's revolutionized my guitar sound. Because I used to use an Egnator, which is a lot darker, a lot fatter sounding amp. And I was using my JMP and I was a little disappointed. And I started trying out other amps. I got this cab, now I'm very happy and my, my JMP now suddenly is absolutely perfect. Because it's not always just about the amp, 
or the cab. It's the combination. So let's move on and let's listen to these three different mics. We're going to use the same kind of mic pre, a BAE 312 on each one of these, and you'll get to see how they work. Okay, so what we did is we, what, we padded the 550 mm. 12 dB. Yeah, it was loud. I mean, that's the thing about condensers. They're a lot more sensitive. So 57 front. 57 back on its own. Definitely loads of low end. Pedal Lewitt. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Lewitt's pretty nice. Definitely a more of a full range sound, you got more low end. Let's say just the 57, let's listen to just the 57 on its own. I mean, it's interesting, that 57 probably doesn't need any EQ. Or it doesn't need the low end taken away. But, I mean, that'll cut. Go back to the limit. So a condenser is pretty full range sounding. Um, we did do a 12 dB pad on this. Um, you know, the condenser is a lot more sensitive, a lot higher output, so we padded it down. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to record all the mics. <laughs> Now, sounds pretty hollow. Why does it sound hollow? It's because the back is almost exactly out of phase with the front. So if we measure this waveform to here, in sample it says 41. So we'll turn on our time adjuster. So we'll give it 41. Now here's with our polarity exactly flipped. <laughs> Low ends in there. So try yeah. turning the polarity on and off. Oh yeah, massive. Yeah. But I do think it's a little, it's a little much uh, with the with the back mic. So we're gonna pull the back mic down a little bit. What would be interesting to hear the, the Lewitt front mic with the 57, but we're going to have to turn this off, so we bypass it here and have a listen. It's a little in the mid range. Definitely a lot more low end. This back on. I think I definitely prefer the sound of the 57 front, the 57 back to the Lubit and the 57 together. Let's have a look at the polarity, see how it is. Yeah, see, it looks pretty darn good. So if you look at the waveforms there, yeah, they're pretty accurate. So it's not an issue of phase. They're together. It just sounds a little dark, doesn't have that detail on the top end. Where if we put the back in with the front and line up the polarity. So if my choices would be this, against just the Lewitt. So the condenser on its own is actually pretty darn tasty. But... I would 
argue that that's the best guitar sound. Depending on how much low end you want from the back mic. <laughs> So I think what we need to do now is change the Lewitt out and put a ribbon in there and okay. see how the ribbon will sound. So let's stick, let's stick in the Sontronics Delta. Okay, so now we have the Sontronics Delta in, which interestingly enough takes Phantom. <laughs> it's nice, I like it. A lot of low end. Go back to 57. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, bratty, punk, I, I know, great. Two together. That's better than the than the condenser and the fifty seven. At least to me it is. That's nice. Let's listen to the condenser. Let's condense from 57. Ribbon. Yeah, ribbon and 57 is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's mid-rangey and aggressive in some ways, but that that the ribbon and the 57 is great. So I suppose now we just have to decide is that better? Let's do this. Let's take a little loop. This. So this is gonna be 57 with the back mic. <laughs> So that's Sontronics and 57, front. Now we're going to go 57 and 57 back. Wow. I'm going to have to go with ribbon front and uh, 57 front. And they're basically both spaced either side of the center of the cone, so they're you know, as close to being in phase, the distance away, but that's pretty, pretty darn good. Let's chew on together. So I think I'd probably like blend them a little differently. I might bring the Sontronics down, the ribbon mic down a bit. But that's pretty tasty. It'd be great to take those two and bust them together through one compressor. I like it. So look, there's many ways to skin a cat, as they say. Um, I think that, you know, we did we did the Lewitt, which is a great mic, but I think that there's tons of other condensers that might sound completely different. But in this little test here, you can definitely tell you can get some lows and some low mids by putting the back mic on and flipping the polarity. So it's it's better phase. That's really cool. I do that a lot. But in often, to be frank, I spend most of my life with just the 57, just the 57 phone. And it's... It sounds good. I'd probably, I'd probably a little extra lows on the amp. But putting that ribbon on, even just a bit lower. I love that. It's tasty. Yeah. And, you know, we could bring, like I said, if we're in a room with a bit more ambience, I'd pull the mic back. You know, there's always a fear, and you can tell it's happened a little bit here. That with this is what you get with ribbons. Clip. They would yeah, they'll clip quite easily. So I would probably just bring my amp master down just a tiny bit. It's on the verge. I mean it's cranking in there. It's yeah. really loud. 
I mean, typically ribbon mics do not take as high a sound pressure. Level. So yeah, I would probably I would probably bring that down a couple of two or three dB on my amp going into it. I'll still get the sound I want. I drive my amp anyway with the boost pedal going in quite heavily. So I don't need the output stage to be quite as cranking as we've got it. But either way, um, I think it's in this instance, you know, trying this out, they all sound good, but definitely the best combination is ribbon with a 57. But that's the great thing about doing this. I mean, you can create tones completely. You know, you, you've got you've got three really, well, four distinct guitar sounds. 57. <laughs> The ribbon mic on its own, two. Fifty seven and the ribbon. Which is really nice. And then fifty seven front and back. All great guitar sounds. So, whichever way you go, you're going to get something cool. And it's just great to have options. It's interesting because we've got one guitar with one amp and all using exactly the same mic pre, and we're trying to get the levels somewhat even. All the differences are coming from the different mics. Yeah. Getting totally different guitar sounds by using different microphones. And frankly, the, the Lewitts are relatively inexpensive mic, but a 57 you can get for around about 100 bucks from Guitar Center. So the, uh, so the moral of the story is you don't have to spend a fortune. If you've got mics, try them out, see what you've got. We just threw up that Sontronics completely and utterly like, oh, it's a ribbon mic and it's, it's sitting down there, let's try it out. But my favorite sound is a 57 with the ribbon. So, um, you know, which is pretty classic. A lot of people use R20, you know, 121s, the Royers with 57s and get great tones. So I hope you learned something. I did. <laughs> I did too. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Leave a bunch of questions and comments below, and we'll see you all again very soon. Oh, and thanks, Yamaha. This is amazing.